Welcome to a screencast on thermochemical equations and calculations. The objectives of this screencast are to write, balance, and interpret thermochemical equations, to classify reactions as either exothermic or endothermic, and to perform calculations involving amounts of substances and enthalpy changes for chemical reactions. Now, you may recall from a previous screencast that chemists use something called enthalpy, or actually enthalpy change, uh, which we symbolize by delta H, to describe the heat or energy change for a chemical reaction. The amount of heat that a reaction gives off or takes in is directly proportional to the amounts of reactants used and to products formed. And because of this, we can perform stoichiometric calculations for heat involved in chemical reactions in precisely the same way as we do for amounts of substances. And this is probably best seen by example. So let's do a couple examples uh, going back to reactions that were also seen in a previous screencast. And the first one will be the complete combustion of acetylene. And acetylene is C2H2. When it undergoes complete combustion, it reacts with oxygen gas to make carbon dioxide and water. And it's uh, by now you should know how to write and balance chemical equations. And the new part is the amount of heat involved in this reaction. And when two moles of acetylene undergoes combustion, it produces 2,600 kilojoules of energy. Uh, this is one way we can write the reaction but we also, uh, and more often, write it with a explicit delta H. So we write the chemical equation balanced correctly, and then at the end, we write delta H, which is for this reaction, is negative 2,600 kilojoules. The negative, of course, means that energy is given off when the reaction occurs. So 2,600 kilojoules of energy are given off, that's the delta H for this reaction, when two moles of acetylene reacts with five moles of oxygen to make four moles of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. And, of course, because this reaction is exothermic, it has a negative delta H, or it has a negative delta H, which means that the reaction is exothermic. Now, dissolving ammonium nitrate in water we saw that process, ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, when the solid dissolves in water, it makes ammonium ions and nitrate ions. And that process, when one mole of ammonium nitrate dissolves, it absorbs 25.7 kilojoules of heat. So we can write this as a thermochemical equation by writing the balanced chemical equation, as shown here, one mole of ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3 solid, when dissolved in water, makes one mole of ammonium ions, one mole of nitrate ions, and the delta H for this process, written separately and explicitly, is delta H, enthalpy change, is plus 25.7 kilojoules, and that is when one mole of ammonium nitrate dissolves, and this is an endothermic reaction, and therefore has a positive delta H, or it, because it has a positive delta H, it's an endothermic reaction. Okay, so now let's do some calculations with this. Uh, first example, what is the enthalpy change when 0.473 moles of acetylene burns? And what does this mean? Well, there is our thermochemical equation showing the stoichiometry of the equation itself and the enthalpy change. And like with uh, chemical equations not involving enthalpy change, we use the thing we know, which is that we want to find the enthalpy change for uh, when 0.473 moles of acetylene burn. So we start with that. And now we want to convert to the thing that we're trying to find, which is enthalpy change. And our conversion factor is that for every two moles of acetylene, 2,600 uh, kilojoules of energy are given off. So negative 2,600 kilojoules per two moles of acetylene. Moles of acetylene cancels. We do the math, 0.473 times negative 2,600 divided by two. And in kilojoules, uh, this works out to be negative 615 kilojoules. And 
uh, how we would interpret this, what does this mean, is that 625 kilojoules of heat is given off when that amount of uh, acetylene burns. Now, of course, we can also do this sort of calculation in the other direction. Um, we might need to know or want to know how much acetylene is needed to produce a given amount of heat. In this case, 15,000 kilojoules of heat. How much acetylene do we need to produce that amount of heat? Well, there's our thermochemical equation once again that we're going to refer to. And this time, we start with what we know, which is that we have 15,000 kilojoules of heat we would like to produce. Um, putting the negative sign on it, indicating we're producing heat, or energy is being given off by the reaction. And then from the reaction equation, from the thermochemical reaction equation, we know that negative 2600 kilojoules is what corresponds to two moles of acetylene burning. Or in other words, when two moles of acetylene burns, it produces 2600 kilojoules of energy. We set it up this way so the kilojoules will cancel. Notice also that the negatives cancel. Um, you could, of course, do this by just sort of thinking about, well, we want to produce 15,000 kilojoules of energy, and 2,600 kilojoules of energy are produced for every two moles of C2H2. And so you could not write the negative sign here if you also don't write it there and you note what the negative sign actually means. And when we work this out, 15,000 times 2 divided by 2,600 gives us 11.54 moles of C2H2. And uh, we're going here with four significant figures, so we're going to assume that we uh, wanted a fairly precise 15,000 kilojoules to four sig figs uh, or more. And then, of course, moles is a perfectly reasonable answer for how much acetylene, but uh, you might want it in grams, for example, and of course, using the molar mass, it's straightforward to calculate the number of grams of acetylene from the moles of acetylene, and that turns out to be 300.5 grams of acetylene. Now, let's do one more example uh, using the dissolving of ammonium nitrate process. This question is, what's the enthalpy change when 40 grams of ammonium nitrate dissolves? And that's a typical amount in a um, cold pack, chemical cold pack. And then also, what does this mean? Well, there is our thermochemical equation. When ammonium nitrate solid dissolves in water, makes ammonium ions, nitrate ions, and absorbs 25.7 kilojoules of energy for one mole of ammonium nitrate. We uh, have 40 grams of ammonium nitrate, which I'm going to abbreviate here by AN. And ammonium nitrate has a molar mass of 80.05 grams per mole. So usual way of converting from grams of ammonium nitrate to moles of ammonium nitrate. And then once we have moles of ammonium nitrate, of course, we can do the conversion to amount of heat or enthalpy change. And this reaction for every one mole of ammonium nitrate that dissolves, 25.7 kilojoules of energy are absorbed. And this allows us to cancel out moles of ammonium nitrate. And when we do this math, 40 grams divided by 80.05 grams per mole, and then 20, times 25.7 kilojoules, and then divided by 1 because it's uh, 1 to 1 to 1 stoichiometry. This gives us 12.8 kilojoules with a positive sign, meaning this amount of uh, enthalpy or energy or heat is absorbed when that amount of ammonium nitrate dissolves. So we would say 12.8 kilojoules of heat is absorbed in this situation. And that is it for the thermochemical equations and calculations screencast.